Hi there, it's uh, James Shepard from Piston Boat Racing up here in Canada. Uh, wanting to, uh, rather than just post some still photos on my blog, do a little video on uh, the new JRI shock that I got for my Ninja 650 uh, Road Racer. So this is the manual that comes with any new shock that you'd uh, get from a company. But uh, of course the cool stuff is the actual part itself. So I'll get that out of the way. And here's the shock. A couple things that I want to highlight about this shock that I've noticed right off the bat. It's uh, the middle of winter up here, so I haven't mounted it to the bike yet, nor am I going to try it for months at a time, so I just get to stare at it on the kitchen floor. First off, it has the usual adjustments in a higher uh, quality shock like this. Got a clicker down here. We've got the ride height adjuster here, which can be this, this nut, jam nut is loosened, and then you can set the ride height how you want. Ninja 650s are known to be a bit squat in the back. A lot of guys like to jack up the back end a bit. And on the remote reservoir itself, with the cool sticker, we've got another bit of adjustment here. I should have this memorized. I can't remember which one is compression or rebound, but I'll look in the manual anyway. And it's nitrogen charged as usual. Um, a few really neat things about this JR JRI shock to start with is the fact that they do advertise it as being much lighter than the competition. And just by picking this thing up, it definitely is a lot uh, lighter. I plan on taking it and an OEM shock that I've got to uh, the post office and just weigh it on the scale there. It might be interesting to see how much lighter it actually is from a stock shock. And if you are uh, riding a high performance bike or doing track days or certainly racing, anything that you can uh, get to be lighter is something you're going to want to be interested in. As uh, you can see, uh, this is set up for a Ninja 650, so it has the wider spacers here. The 650 has a basic cantilever rear suspension. It doesn't use any linkage, and it has uh, some pretty uh, heavy gauge bolts holding it to the swing arm of the frame. M12, I think, is the actual size. That might be an M10. I can't remember, but anyway, it's uh, got the correct bore size as well as the correct spacer width right here, which is uh, interesting. The Penske that I had, it was a great shock. But um, these things were actually a, a plastic or a Delrin um, um, material. So I like the idea of, of using proper machined alloy there, especially on something that's going to take a beating like a, a racing shock. The spring preload is adjustable. And what it has different than a lot of the shocks I've used is instead of using a C-spanner, it actually has this neat little uh, tool here. Uh, either the short or the long male end just fits in one of these holes here. And then you can adjust the preload once you set the sag and get the shock set up how you want to. Right here, of course, is the uh, um, threaded Allen bolts that uh, sort of work as a lock um, bolt or rather than a lock nut to set the uh, spring tension the way you want it to. So that comes in a little package as well with some stickers that I've already removed. The uh, two of these uh, hose clamps in order to attach the remote reservoir to the subframe and these nice little rubber spacers here to make sure that it's not there's some cushion between the remote reservoir and the subframe. One of the coolest things that I had no idea about uh, with this JRI shock is that the hose or the line for the remote reservoir is adjustable. A lot of times because this is under pressure these lines are attached with uh, a brake banjo bolt like you'd see on a, a, a front brake line and oftentimes these lines are, are uh, you know stainless steel which is good quality but whatever attitude this line is 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 static however they set it up at the factory they bolt the line on here maybe 90 degrees from the head of the shock or maybe maybe like this and it's it's there so when you go to mount it to your bike oftentimes this this uh, hose is twisted around or just under tension which it really shouldn't be the great thing is both at this end here you'll notice that this line actually will move and twist around whatever way you want to okay and this side here you can see it twist around you can move the fitting however where you want and when you think about it if you do have a race bike or a dedicated track bike the shape and design of the subframe, if you're running a different subframe than stock,
um, is going to is going to be different. So again, if a shock is built by a company to be set up on the stock subframe, and you put on an aftermarket one, however they've got this line set up between these two pieces may not fit that well. And it's always nasty to have this stuff curved around, and it just looks awful. So this allows you a lot more flexibility in terms of how you can uh, mount this uh, remote reservoir to your bike, make it look nice and clean, get it out of the path of the rear wheel, and tidy up the whole uh, the whole assembly. So when you take a look at a shock like this, the fact that it's you know made in the United States, high quality obviously, um, a lot of the technicians that work at JRI and certainly the one fellow that works in the motorcycle shock de uh, department, they have uh, experience at Penske. Um, you know, this shock retails for 985 as a sponsored rider, and I'm just a privateer from Canada. I certainly got it at a at a cut uh, cut cost. Um, but even if you're paying retail, that's a great shock, um, considering your options are you know the typical Olean's, Penske, Elka for the Ninja 650. If you want to go overseas, Wilbur's from Germany makes one, as well as uh, Nitron. Um, out of the UK, Biturbo, I believe it's pronounced, from Italy, you know, and, and when you go that route, yeah, you're getting a pretty exotic shock, but servicing is going to be difficult, you got to pay for shipping and all that other sort of stuff. So, in my opinion, having um, run on the bikes that I've had, I've had Olean shocks, I've had Penske's, I've had Fox, this is a, this is a great shock, I'm really looking forward to, to trying it out. Um, you know, Hyperco spring, so this this is a quality uh, quality piece of engineering here, and um, for that uh, for the price point, it's it's definitely good and, and an awesome alternative. Remember too that this has a decent race pedigree. Last year, this shock was fitted to one of the two EBR bikes. I believe it was Jeff May's um, EBR Hero Eric Buell Racing AMA Superbike, which got on the podium. And you know those AMA guys don't put crap on their bikes, so obviously it's uh, it's a decent uh, product. JRI has experience in NASCAR, IndyCar, Formula One, Rally, the whole nine yards. So these guys know how to uh, to build shocks, and I'm, as you can tell, I'm pretty excited about fitting it on my bike and uh, giving it a try. If you are an MRA rider, a Manitoba Road Racing Association rider, and you're interested in getting one of these shocks for yourself. Retail is $985. Um, I can get these for you for $800 plus shipping, which you know is basically uh, $200 off the retail price, which I think is a fairly decent deal. If you want to take a look at it up close, come on out to the track this uh, summer, uh, rider number 91, or you can email me, and if you're looking at this on the blog you can uh, get a hold of me through that anyway this is your JRI shock and they do make shocks for just about every motorcycle out there as well as custom stuff so you send them the mic and model of your bike and they will build one for you